Hello and welcome back. And that is right, today we want to talk about the new Unify Express 7. This is the new affordable, easy, quick setup alternative to a number of Unify controlled devices. This allows you to find a middle ground between Unify Dream Machine devices, Unify Router devices, ultimately allowing users the quickest, easiest, simplest, low impact way to integrate Unify into their network. But is that what you want? It's a fair question. A number of users who have never used Unify before are probably quite happy with their existing switches, probably quite happy with their ISP router. What exactly does this bring to the table? And also, if Unify is suggesting this is a much more streamlined, low footprint, affordable alternative to their other solutions, what's it missing out on? And that's what this video is about. Yes, it's a review, and yes, we'll be digging into the software, but we really have to nail down one of the biggest questions early doors. Why would you go for this and not go for a big old router? Why would you not go for a router? or one of those big dream machine devices. What does it do, what does it doesn't? Well, straight away I'll say right now, this focuses a lot, a lot more on wireless capabilities rather than wired. That isn't to say that it doesn't have wired capabilities, as you can see there on screen. We have a couple of physical interfaces there. We have a um, copper 10G base T, that is WAN or optional LAN 10 gig connection there. Not SFP either, direct in with the copper. But there's only a single Ethernet out there in terms of LAN connectivity, a 2.5 gig of Ethernet, which is good to start with. Now, when you compare that to a device that has been released at largely the same time, their router situation, uh, router uh, devices there, these have the following set up there on the back. We've got 2.5 gig of Ethernet and we've got 10 GBE there on the base as well. So that means this device not only gives you most of the same capabilities in terms of Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 7, but it gives you a whole host more physical connectivity. So why on earth would you spend less on something like this? Well, for a start, this device with the same CPU and largely the same memory profile as that device, supporting Wi-Fi 5, 6 and 7, because of that 2.5 gig of Ethernet there, this much more affordable device allows you to take advantage of things like this. This is the tiny little 2.5 gig switch from Unify. This running on just simple USB connectivity there and PoE connectivity will allow you to add for just $30 to $40 an additional bunch of 2.5 gig ports to this. You can run that in, you can manage this with this, along with the mobile app, the client apps as well, and add a bunch more ports. But what about that wireless connectivity? Well, the Express can be used either in conjunction with an existing Unify setup as a mesh point or add further mesh points like this one. This is the U7 Pro, a Wi-Fi 7 mesh point there. So the Express allows you that larger um, flexibility down the road, adding components as you go, rather than spending a lot more at the beginning with a Dream Machine or any other controller device or even their routers there. And add to that the fact that this device is powered on a nice modest USB output and if you go for something like this, which is a $30 USB 65 to 100 watt output, a single outlet could be used to power this here with your switch, this here with the main express, and this here with a wireless AP. Of course, distance will be a concern if you would get a USB to PoE adapter. My point is that the express's purpose is to allow for a simple, modest, but highly scalable a solution in Unify. But what does this device bring to the table? What can it do and what can it not, not do? Well, I'll say straight away, although it can run a lot of the network management applications that I'll talk about later on in the software section, I will add that this device, when it comes to things like Protect, when it comes to connecting cameras, you're gonna need further devices down the road for that. Also, although it, like the router I just mentioned, does support Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 7, it's worth highlighting that this device has got is lesser in terms of the frequency and the, or well, less the frequency, more than the antennae at four times four. It does support 2.4, five gigahertz and six gigahertz there. But if you want to scale out even more and you've got more client devices in mind, then you're probably gonna go for that router solution due to its larger coverage there, uh, four times four and six times six, uh, with six uh, downstreams on that. Now, when it comes to this device and wireless capability, it can support up to three, uh, well over 300 clients very easily. So again, all of those devices in that Unify network, and that extends to creating the individual um, SSIDs that you can utilize there, creating the VLANs, but keep in mind you probably will 
need to think about adding some switches there if you really want to make the most of that. Also, the profiling of those devices, the uh, quality of service control, stuff like that. And keep in mind that Wi-Fi 7 opens the door to that 6 gigahertz frequency as well as managing 320 hertz connections there, not just the 20 40, 80, and 160 bands there. Wi-Fi 7 also allows for you to take advantage of um, creating multiple connections at any given time. So then you can bind them together. Multi-layer output, MLO, will allow you via a Wi-Fi 7 adapter, like a $30 one that we used in testing, allowing you to create multiple connections between a single client device, like a Windows laptop, and not only scale up from traditional gigabit physical LAN connections, but with Wi-Fi 7 and that $30 adapter, I was able to establish a single connection between that laptop and this at 2.8 gigabits per second. That is higher than the physical 2.5 gig connection there on the rear. We have to factor in with Wi-Fi 7, of course, that the scalability of the 6 gigahertz band doesn't cover the same range as the 5 gigahertz band and the 2.4 gigahertz band covers even more but even then, that is just another question of scalability here. But let's dig into that software for those that aren't aware of the router and network management applications and abilities of the Unify software now. Now, if you're already pretty familiar with the Unify software platform, and again, the controller, be it via a switch, uh, an express a router, or any one of the myriad of devices, there's a lot of stuff here you're already going to know about. But I want to make sure I cover as much as I can to anyone that's never entered this ecosystem. So I'm really sorry if some of this is stuff I'm telling you that you already know. I will say right now that when it comes to managing a router or a cloud gateway or an internet gateway, whatever the phraseology you want to use, it's really up there in terms of usability and single pane of access and control. Now, I've already touched on earlier on that this device, not only have I got it connected to an internet connection, but on top of that, I've wired it into a network switch, as you can see there. Notwithstanding, we've got a bunch of Wi-Fi devices here, thanks to the topography that is presented in the Express 7's UI, thanks to Unify. But we've got that 2.5 gig 5 port switch, which is also filtering into another Unify device and a couple of NAS devices there. We can even assess internet flow where exactly that internet is going what's taking advantage of it as you can see there there is the laptop i'm using right now but the abundance of that is going into a surveillance camera over here that topography can be configured pretty extensively where you can actually at a single glance see exactly how all the devices in your network are connected and if you do have an issue you will be able to see the problem a lot more than analytically now that isn't to say that you don't have analytical tools here because you bloody well do notwithstanding a breakdown of exactly the number of appliances and websites that are being accessed at any given time but you can also break down into the individual radio frequencies how and what is being accessed their individual strength the environment and other Wi-Fi connections that may be dotted around, how they compare to yours, how they overlay, you can break it down substantially all the way down to the system itself, which not only allows you to monitor the individual radio frequencies and which devices are connected to them, but if you do connect to Unify switch, you can go ahead and immediately manage that through the Express Gateway here, allowing you to not only assign different devices to physical ports and individual VLANs, so for example, if we go down into the settings menu here, I can go ahead at the click of a switch, go ahead and create a brand new VLAN if I choose to, and assign individual devices to that VLAN, allowing for air gapping as well, where I can set schedules to this and more. On top of that, I can assign that to multiple individual SSIDs, and these individual Wi-Fi connections, I can go ahead if I choose to, Again, assign uh, Wi-Fi blackouts for on and off, uh, individual encryption methodology there, which devices can access and when, as well as apply QoS and POS quality of service and priority of service protocol to those individual devices. And those devices, once they are connected, as you can see here, and these are all of the devices I've got connected, I can do it the other way around. So for example, say this Pixel 8 Pro here, which is connected over Wi-Fi 7 here, as you can see, and you can see the bandwidth that's assigned to it I can not only see the different levels of connection I've got it connected to but on top of that if I choose to I can bind it to a different connection if I choose to and again I can immediately control that this device cannot access certain services and I can really break it down to an incredible granular level on a per device or whole SSID VLAN or whole router control point experience 
And moreover, much like the topography I mentioned earlier on, where we could see the individual layout of our network, when it comes to the Wi-Fi, because this is a very, very Wi-Fi-centric device, at least out of the box before you go down any upgrades or scale out, you can see here the full radio spectrum here and how things are connected. And then from there, you can choose you know, for example, right now, if you had something connected on a 320 megahertz Wi-Fi 7 connection there uh, on the 6 gigahertz band, you're able to see just what the occupation of it is on that Wi-Fi connection. And depending on your region, you're going to see some areas that are blocked out. So uh, a little known fact when it comes to people in the UK, as good as Wi-Fi 7 is, a great deal of the uh, 6 gigahertz frequency is blocked out. So for example here, I've got the uh, Wi-Fi 7 Dream router here. And if I open it out in a new tab, and again, we are accessing this via UI.com when accessing it on the LAN, um, I will say I did that predominantly just to show that you can manage this remotely. You don't have to use a UI.com account. That is non-compulsory. But as you can see here, this router, which I've set to UK settings, has a majority of the 6 gigahertz band locked out right now. Whereas in other regions, you do still have access to it. So do keep that in mind if you are considering this device for your Wi-Fi. Another thing to keep in mind for your own Wi-Fi for home or business is, of course, security. And there is a myriad of encryption and security protocols built in here that if you want to use them, they are there, but they're non-compulsory. That's really, really important. So, for example, VPNs, there's a lot of support of uh, not only their own first-party VPN services, but on top of that, the VPN services of third parties, OpenVPN, WireGuard, all of it can be configured quite easily for either a traditional VPN anonymity setup or if you want to go for something like an SD-WAN setup across multiple sites there with the security protocol pretty distinct. Again, you've got the usual stuff like port forwarding you should have on any router, but intrusion prevention can be configured quite extensively. And on top of that, the traffic and firewall configuration and controls are pretty darn user-friendly there. And again, that can be set to a very simplified setup there where it is effectively just individual this that the other all can be broken down pretty extensively into those different rules and provisions and root and control there can be set pretty extensively across different protocols very very easily and configured to your heart's content individual profiles can be created there that are bind to individual physical connections and what can happen again all of that ensuring how and what is accessing your network and the wi-fi outside of your network can be configured and controlled to your heart's content. And for SI system integrators, you've got things like advanced tabs and configurations where you can set the device to a professional installation, which opens up a lot of the radial uh, coverage there on the whole system. And if you break down into the control plane, not only can you go ahead within the uh, console and configure a lot of the system options, right the way down to SSH for terminal level control, but you can create individual power users or use identity endpoint to further verify uh, access to this and control and manage of the wire. Wi-Fi internet access point there and just the Wi-Fi network in general and again a huge amount of analytical information is can be um, sent to you via simple notifications or larger scale updates on the local area network utilizing a lot of those mobile apps ultimately Again, this comes down to that scale out of this. This is a very uh, simplified alternative to a power router, but it does allow for that scaling up. And as long as you're going to remain within the uh, uh, ubiquity slash unify uh, peripheral uh, environment, a lot of this scale out is going to be very uh, sim simplified. It's going to be instant add on and adopt and very, very user friendly. Bottom line, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not the target audience for something like this. I understand that if I had this in my home or office environment, I would want to scale it out very quickly. And for the price difference between it and the newly released Wi-Fi 7 router, I'll say right now, I would rather spend the extra and go for the router. That is not me knocking the capabilities, not knocking the hardware and the build quality of it. I think in every regard, it ticked all the boxes for me and it does everything they say it will do. But for me, the scalability isn't that appealing when I know I could just spend a little bit more now and have all of that out the box. But I know I'm not every man. And some of you are gonna be thinking about the Express over a router upgrade because because this can still be utilized in your existing environment and you could rely on your ISP router already or perhaps your existing Unify router right now. Bottom line, this device allows you for a small price to allow larger upgrades to your network connectivity and network 
environment over time. And Unify has been updating and committing to that software for so long that I wouldn't worry too much about going for something like this and wondering how long they'll support the software because the Expresses have got a heck of a history on them. And given that all this Wi-Fi 7 bumpers have rolled out uh, all at the same time, it's clear that Unify are kind of going for a larger scale support program on these. But what do you guys think? Perhaps you're a previous owner of the Express and you were happy with it and you never felt the need to scale up. Or perhaps you are someone that bought one and very quickly found out that the scalability kind of left you with no recourse but to upgrade very early. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you are interested in getting hold of one of these, there is a link in the description that will take you over to Unify Store. And if you use that link, myself and Eddie, just us here at NAS Compares, get a small commission. It allows us to keep doing what we do, but it's up to you if you want to use it. Apart from that, there is also a link below to the full written review, so do check that out. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.